Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, Taste Today Q&A session with our industry expert. Uh, so with me I've got Matt Carroll from uh, Sports Interactive. Matt, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello everyone, my name's Matt and I'm the Chief Operating Officer or a COO at Sports Interactive. Fantastic, okay. So for those that might not know, COO, uh, what does that involve, Chief Operating Officer? Good question. So it's a relatively new role in the games industry. It's it's come along maybe in the last five, ten years, and it deals with the operations. Um, that is to say, it tends not to be a creative role, but it works with the creatives, and it oversees everything from uh, the studio space, the IT equipment, um, more fundamentally the finances, um, so making sure everyone gets paid, um, in my particular role, I also look a lot at the revenues and the commercial opportunities. Um, and I guess for new games makers coming on, why would you want one or why would you need one? I, I see my role as complementing a creative and allowing them to spend a lot more time focused on what they really care about, what they're really passionate about, and taking away all the other things that might get in the way, whatever that might be. I have a bit of authority, I'm, I'm near the top of the organisation, and so if things need to get done, money needs to be spent, you know, I'm the person who can enable that very quickly. Um, okay. But yeah, it's a pretty broad role, and in different studios, CEOs do slightly different things. Um, they come from slightly different backgrounds as well, I should say that. But broadly, we're here to help everyone be the best that they can be when they're making games. Okay, so just to give people a little bit more of an idea of what uh, Sports Interactive is and, and what it looks like. Uh, so you're based at, uh, here east, which is uh, where uh, Staffordshire University London is located as well. Um, and just to give people an idea of, of what your, your working environment actually looks like, um, it doesn't look like the standard office environment, would you, would you agree? Um, I think it's typical of a software developer maybe, but yes, it's not typical. We all sit on one floor. It's very important for us that we are one team and that our team members can see one another and have the opportunity to bump into each other and, and talk a lot. We pay a lot of attention to the common areas. So you can see in the picture behind me, we have Franz, which is our, it's our kitchen by day and our sports bar by night. Um, and it's where most of our team members will loiter when they've got five, ten minutes either to play a quick game of darts um, or play the consoles. We have all the consoles in there um, or just, you know, pool or chat. And um, it's also where you get your coffee and we've got fridges for people's lunches um, and we run evening board game classes and um, all sorts of quizzes occasionally. And when there's football on, we have multiple screens so you can watch two Champions League games at the same time. So we really wanted to create a place where people, you know, we spend so much time at work and you spend so much time with your workmates. We wanted it to be a place where people could relax and enjoy each other's company and not just be always looking at a screen. Creative industries and game making uh, brings together very unusual people, very diverse talents, very different backgrounds. Um, we have a lot of introverts. Um, and sometimes people are very shy and, and you know, worry about mingling with people. We, we're trying to create a safe culture where people are comfortable with everyone else and it's not just about work. Um, so just to sort of go back a little bit um, and talk about what sort of games have you worked on, on the part, in the past? Obviously you've, you mentioned uh, Football Manager already, which is um, Sports Interactive's big title. Um, but what games have you uh, personally um, been in the studio working on yeah i can you've put the disney lego on there so i spent a long time at disney nearly 17 years there and worked on a, a multitude of products but um maybe i'll go back a step so i started in the games industry in the mid 90s and i'd done a postgraduate degree in business after working uh in children's book industry initially and then for a local council and leisure services um so i knew i wanted to do entertainment of some sort and um first projects I worked on was for a company called Microprose, um, who were very big in the day. They're famous for doing Civilization um, and at the time the Formula One Grand Prix games, which I got to work on Formula Grand Prix 3. I started my career in the marketing department. I was a product manager and my job was to work with a development studio 
to track when the game was coming out. Was it targeted to the right platforms um, and system specs? Was it the target audience addressed? What did the demo and tutorials look like? And I did all the marketing materials, the box front, um, the marketing elements and so on. Uh, and I worked on Worms 2 in particular, um, which I was always very good fun and always proud to work with. I worked on um, Mech Warrior, uh, so a product called Mech Commander. Um, I worked on Roller Coaster Tycoon. I joined uh, the Walt Disney Company in 2001 and had a very long career there. We were on DS and Wii, which was absolutely a phenomenal uh, business and very successful. Um, but we also used the iToy, for example, on PlayStation, and we okay. made uh, Disney Move. We worked with um, Xbox and their Connect, and had interactive products. Um, they acquired a mobile company, and we got into mobile games very, very early. Uh, we had a very famous game at the time called Where's My Water? 99p. Yep. It was when every game cost 99p, and there was no <laughs> freemium model. Cool. Yeah, so today I'm at Sports Interactive. Um, we make the game Football Manager, and Football Manager's been around since 2005. Uh, what's the most successful title you've worked on? Oh, good question. <sighs> That's a good question. Do you know, it doesn't ring off the tongue at the moment, because <laughs> I, I've been very blessed to work on a huge variety of mm. titles, and typically I like to really immerse myself in the projects that I work on. Um, believe it or not, I worked on a, um, a sing-star version of High School Musical, and I would nice. demo by singing those tunes. And at the time, that was the best thing ever. Um, but And actually, while I'm on that topic, I also got to make a dance game uh, based on Hannah Montana or Miley Cyrus today. Yeah. So <laughs> that was also fun to demo. Um, I was quite good at the dance games at the arcades. Cool. Fantastic. And... On the opposite spectrum, what's the least successful game that you've worked on? Yeah, and, and to work in development and to be a games maker, you will definitely have failures. And um, I would say that in any one publishing year, there's probably a, a third of titles that disappoint um, right. when you've got a big portfolio. Um, I've had the embarrassment of, of titles that have sold you know, single digit numbers back in the physical days. Mm. Um, you know, so. You know, but every one of them is a learning opportunity, and that sounds very cliched, but it is true. I mean, this, yeah, you know, once you've had a few failures, you, you definitely sharpen up what needs to be improved, and you're much easier to make difficult decisions. So, in your opinion, uh, what makes the games industry exciting to work in? Well, I love working in the games industry. I, I almost fell into it by accident. I thought I'd be working in the toy industry. Um, and when you fall into the games industry, it's incredibly difficult to get out because it is hugely fun. Um, I like the, the mix of the um, always moving, there's always new technologies, there's always something that you can do better. It's a very iterative industry and people can play a game and you know instantly think, oh, I know what I would do to make it mine or better or more. Um, so it moves fast. Um, I describe it also as a bit like fast fashion. Um, things get dated quite quickly, and so you're always moving on to the next thing. It makes it interesting, and um, you know you're not you're not reselling the same thing day after day. Um, it's a people business. Uh, you know you're working as teams, and you're working on very complex problems sometimes, and so it's tremendously satisfying to solve things together. Um, and you know, to to be in the presence of other people who are really smart and talented. Mm. Um, our studio is a very diverse studio. We have uh, people from more than 20 countries uh, speaking more than 20 languages. We're a global product, and we try and um, have as many people on the team to give us as diverse a set of opinions as we can. Um, so you know, it's really interesting to at uh, one minute work with someone who's totally obsessed with the localization process and making sure that it's a game of two halves can be translated appropriately into the French version or the German version. Um, and at the next moment, talk to someone who's absolutely fascinated with, say, particle physics and how it applies to football formations and, and so on. So you're always going to meet really interesting people. 
Um, there's always people like you, maybe, that uh, might go off in tangents or have specialist interests. Um, and, you know, we are a creative industry at heart. People don't particularly care about your your habits or your attitudes. You know, generally, it's a very permissive and accepting and acceptable place to be. And so it attracts really interesting people with really interesting stories. Um, and that makes going to work a lot more fun. And, um, you know, every every day is a new adventure. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Matt, for joining me uh, and for answering some questions. Um, yeah, thank you very much. My pleasure. Best of luck to everyone. Cheers. Thank you.